from the top of Alp Duez, welcome to the GCN Show. From Boston Bike Party, welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN show. The 201st, no less. Yes. Uh, this week's burning question is, were last week's US presidential elections quite good for cycling? Mm. We've also got more of your fantastic confessions in our new segment, Crimes Against Cycling, and Spartacus bids his final farewell in Ghent. And we've got lots more hacks and bodges for you, plus we announced some more competition winners. You like so let's people. get started. Yeah, let's get going. <laughs> It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Fabian Cancellara, aka Spartacus, has bid his final farewell to the sport of cycling. Or at least to his own competitive career. Uh, he did so at the Coipke Velodrome in Ghent just last week. And amongst those to attend were Bradley Wiggins, Sir Bradley Wiggins, Piva Pozzato and Sepp Van Mark. And amazingly, in the final race, Fabian got the better of Bradley Wiggins, who you remember won a gold medal in the team pursuit just a couple of months ago, in the two kilometre pursuit. Unbelievable performance. That's incredible. But perhaps it's because, by his own admissions on social media, that Fabs did actually put on five to six kilograms of muscle oh, mass. True. Yeah. So I you mean, never know. If I was a betting man, which I am, we know, yeah. I would have put quite a big amount of wedge on Fabian winning that race. Mm. Just had a feeling. Talking of races, the UCI have announced in 2017 there will be 18 World Tour teams after all, which is great news for the likes of Dimension Data. Although, they also discussed the possibility that in 2019, there might be only 16 World Tour teams. Now, the results of that particular set of discussions we published in December, and I, for one, will be very intrigued to see what they are. Yeah, that wasn't the only thing, actually, that came out of that UCI meeting, because they also discussed the possibility of changing the World Tour next year to 38 races rather than 37, with a late last minute potential upgrade for another race. Can you guess which one it is? It's not the Tour of Huangxi, is it, in China? It is, it is, which is fantastic news for fans over in China of the sport of cycling, because of course they haven't had a World Tour race since the Tour of Beijing folded back in 2014. Now, if you like touring videos, which I know you do, Dan, mm -hmm. you'll love the Just Ride series featuring BMC's Daniel Oss. Now, he rode 800 kilometres through Italy to rediscover his passion for cycling and rediscover his Italian roots. Now, he did it back in June, immediately after riding the Giro. Yeah, I remember his Instagram post. He's a big grammar, isn't he? Yeah, and if you want to watch that video, there's a, there's a link in the description below this one, but please don't watch it now. Yeah, wait till the, end, till of this, the end of the show. show. Don't go yet. But it is a cracker. Well, from adventure cycling to indoor cycling. And indoor cycling with a difference now for anyone that wants to do it in New York. Now, we know that a lot of you like your spin classes. Our videos have always proved very popular in that regard. But you can now do spin classes in an IMAX theatre sat Whoa. and cycling in front of a huge cinema screen, which immerses you in various parts of the world, which might be the Alps, or it could be a roller coaster. So certainly something very different indeed. But not, not our videos, so it's not going to be us as IMAX. Not yet, not yet. We might pitch to them. Can you, can you uh, imagine? It's not cheap though. It's going to cost you $34 to do a 45 minute session. So it's actually more expensive than just going to watch a film. But it's completely immersive. Very. And you can travel to distant parts of the universe on your bike. But I still recommend just spinning along to our videos, personally. So do I, to be honest with you. Now we're going to finish cycling shorts this week with our usual tenuous cycling celebrity insert. Now this particular insert was brought to our attention by Carl Monaghan via the Sticky Bottle website. Get my laptop, because it's absolutely astonishing. Now, Michael O'Leary of Ryanair fame, or perhaps infamy, yeah. recently advertised for the post of assistant to him. Now, along with the, the, the usual kind of qualifications that you require to attain that position, he requested particularly this. Now, applicants were told they couldn't be Man United fans, so Manchester United fans, dubs, I'm assuming that's Dubliners, right? and listen to this, cyclists. You're not allowed to be a cyclist. Not allowed to be a cyclist. I mean, absolutely ridiculous, and just further alienating himself from a ridiculously wide spectrum of people. I he, mean, that's insane. He doesn't mind upsetting people. Does he doesn't, Michael, does he? Does he? No. Uh, I'm getting, though, that he didn't ride a bike in any way, shape or form, then. 
I don't think so, but one thing's for sure, he clearly doesn't like cyclists in particular. Which probably makes this our most tenuous cycling celebrity segment ever, which is saying something. Can you do a bit better uh, next yeah, week? you're right. I mean, I couldn't find anything better, I'm afraid, but it's almost like a reverse cycling celebrity insert mm -hmm. in the fact that he doesn't like cycling at all, but I'll try and do better next week. Yeah, please. Be safe, be seen. Now, that is a mantra that many of us cyclists live by when cycling on the open roads. Lights, fluorescent, bright or reflective clothing. There's even lights in helmets yeah. these days, but Aurora Bright Bikes, Chloe's in the title or the name, have taken things just a step further. They most certainly have. So this bike is currently on Kickstarter, check it out. Inbuilt into the frame and forks are LEDs, which are customizable. So not only do they flash in various colors, you can also set them to flash in various weird and wonderful, but always bright patterns. And you can even set them to pulsate in time with your heartbeat, which is quite incredible. Yeah. What do you reckon, Matt? Well, I wouldn't be seen done one of those. Well, no, not if you'd set it to go in time with your heart rate. It's, uh, yeah. Also, first cycling disco as well. We're about to make a few of you very happy indeed because it's that time of the show. It's competition time. It certainly is. This week we are announcing the winners of the unboxing of the Sea Sense front and rear lights and also the rear lights. So first up, the winners of the Icon Plus front and rear lights are... Do you want a drum roll? Yes, please. Matt Pickford, Joe Pugliese, Quoctran Nuno Silva and Stuart Huddle will be in touch with all of you uh, to get your prizes off to you. Congratulations to you, look. But we have five winners of the C-Sense rear light as well and they are as follows. Drum roll, please. That'll do. Luca Vitanen of Switzerland, Alessandro De Candia of Italy, Kieran Doohan of Ireland, Peyton Jones of the US, another winner from the US, Adam D'Souza. Well done. Yeah. Were last week's US presidential elections good for cycling? Probably not the first thoughts in people's minds as Donald Trump was elected as president of the good old US of A, but people of Los Angeles County, along with casting their vote as to who they wanted to be president, also cast their vote in favour of something called Measure M. Yeah, what this actually means is that they voted in favour of a very small increase in sales tax, and that money will go towards public transport infrastructure, but more particularly improving cycling networks, which is absolutely fantastic news for anybody cycling and living in the area, and of course visiting the area too. But amazingly, for just an increase in half a cent, okay, for every dollar, that means they can collect $870 million annually, and that will actually increrease year after year too. Yeah, it's so a lot they're of money. predicting that in total over the next 40 years, they're gonna have $120 billion to use for this infrastructure, and at least four billion of that is going to be earmarked for cycling and walking, which incidentally, haven't had any sustainable funding in that area before now. Now, some of the initial ideas include linking up two existing cycle trails, which will then allow cyclists to for the first time, be able to ride from the valley all the way down to Long Beach, as well as creating a whole host of new cycle lanes, which will allow a lot of kids to be able to ride into school and back, which is fantastic news. Yeah, we'd love to know what you think, especially if you had, well, if you headed up that amount of money, basically, especially if you lived in the area and you know what to do, leave your comments down below. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. We're mm. actually quite jealous. The fourth round of the Super Prestige Cross Series took place in Garvera over the weekend and Mathieu van der Poel continued his unbeaten record so far in 2016 in that particular series. That is, of course, his fourth in a row. Quite incredible form he's on right now. Second place on the day, over a minute back, was, you can probably guess... Wout van Aert. It was, indeed. And third place went to two nuts. Well, meanwhile, in the women's event, it was Sana Kant, who clearly could. She took, sorry, she took her third victory in this year's Super Prestige Series. And in fact, it was her fourth victory in a row in that particular event. Wow. Yeah. Second place was Julian Bashurin at a very tight six second. And Christina Majerus took third. And in the process, rounded out the podium. She sure did. Uh, meanwhile, the organisers of the Sudal Classic Jamarkt Cross got the headlines and column ah. inches last week due to a unique course design. So they added in a special new segment called the Spider Web, which is in effect a kind of spiral where the riders get increasingly dizzy as they go around the spiral over subsequent laps. Not sure if mm. that is a work of genius or just a marketing gimmick. I'll let you decide. I'll be honest with you, from my humble opinion, 
based on my years of cyclocross expertise, forward slash experience, yeah. I think it's a combination of both gimmick and genius. I wonder, I'd like to see you go around the spider web. I wouldn't. No. Can you imagine? I would. For line here, uh, oh, pretty classic. <laughs> so then I attacked and stayed away 15 miles. Again? Yeah. Can you, you hear that? I can, yeah. Is it coming from that? No, no, it's coming from over there in that cabinet. Oh, right. Wow! The red GCN Camelback bottles have finally arrived! They really are a thing of beauty. So rest assured, if you've ordered yours, it will be with you very, very soon. And in fact, many have already arrived on people's doorsteps because you've shared the photos, beautiful as they are, on social media. Mm. Great it's stuff. no coincidence, actually, that we've allowed Simon Richardson a holiday this week. Yeah. Now the whole debacle has finally been sorted Just to out. Let, let things die Along with this good news, though, I'm afraid there is a bit of bad news. Because mm. despite the fact that, from a literal sense, we've just got these in stock, they are, in fact, out of stock. They've yeah. proven so popular with you over the last few months as you've been waiting for them. Uh, they will be back in stock at some point. We've ordered a new batch. However, you might understand that we're slightly reluctant to give you an exact date as to when the next batch is going to arrive. But if you want to be one of the first to be informed about when the new batch arrives, just go onto shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, click on the bottle page, and then click on the option which says, inform me when back in stock. Tell you what, Dan, got something. Well, remember, these clear GCN bottles, yep. and we said they'd never be for sale. Yeah. Well, they are for sale. What? Yeah, but as part of a limited edition clear hydration pack. Right. Now, the other part of this pack, as well as the bottle, will be pretty close to your heart. Guess what it is? I've had at least eight mineral wards, mineral wards, mineral wards myself. It's a pint glass. Ah, oh, nice. Yes. But they are in really limited supply. So again, go to shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com for your clear hydration pack to include the previously not available clear bottles and a special limited edition GCN mm. logo pint glass. You better be quick, because I'm going to order some pint glasses with the bottle. I've already got my order in. It's time for Crimes Against Cycling. <laughs> It is, and you'll remember last week was Edward Scissorhands from New Zealand who evaded police whilst being seen not wearing a helmet on a bright lime green bike which he never rode again. You voted in your droves over the last seven days and I can tell you now that 54% of you voted... Guilty. Guilty. So I guess Edward Scissorhands has the honour, if you can call it that, of being the first ever guilty as charged crimes against cycling person on the GCN show. Indeed. We've got another quick crimes against cycling before the big one of the week. This is from Radu Daikonu. Uh, Duval on a non-Duval glass, definitely a crime against cycling for cyclists that love Yeah, it. I will deem myself guilty for that one. I'm, I apologise. Uh, we also had some one from Avanti who said, Cheated on Zwift using the Z-Power mode for five minutes. I added a second magnet on my wheel to make it register double the speed. So ashamed. Sorry, Zwifters. I'm not surprised you're sorry. That is definitely a crime against cycling. We are saying you are guilty. Anyway, on to the main event of the week. Yes, this is from Beth and Morris. Now, the crime has two parts, okay? The act, and the intent, sorry, and what exactly happened. Here we go. I was cycling around Regent's Park in London and was shamelessly drafting my friend for about 20 k's, queen of the mountains galore. I spotted a good looking fellow cyclist, so I shamelessly went for the overtake so I could win them over with my cycling skills. It will work one day. However, just not watching the road, I managed to miss an Uber, which is a taxi, pulling out and smashed into the back of it, completely my fault and breaking its rear headlights. True to form, it drove off, drove off leaving me relieved until I realised I definitely needed to go to hospital. At this point, you guessed it, I requested an Uber, a taxi. And the same one circled back and picked her up. We made blood splattered small talk about the weather and I failed to, to bring up the woman sized dent in the door of the boot. Ah, oh, poor Beth. That sounds That's horrible. a story. So, we will be letting you decide whether Beth was guilty or not guilty of a crime against cycling. You can click on the link in the window right now to cast said vote. It's a tough one, that, isn't it? It is tough this week. It's time for caption competition. Last week's photo was this one of Niemiec and Ulyssi at their team get together using chopsticks. And the winner is Mark Cook, who put caption, Oh, is that a lamprey? 
It's all in the spelling, you see, because lamprey is actually a fish. Top aquatic knowledge mm. there from uh, Mark Cook. Now, yeah. this one. Get in touch on uh, Facebook, Mark, and we should send you out a clear GCN Camelback water bottle. Remember, they are very, very limited indeed. Now, this week is a photo of Wout van Aert, the world cyclocross champion, in action in a quite an unorthodox sort of pose. Now, I'll get you started. How about this for how to mount your bicycle at GCN? I was going to say, I shouldn't have had beams this morning. Well, both are pretty good. Yeah. I think we've set the standard pretty high. We have. Week, actually, uh, don't, if you honest. think you can compete with either of us or even do better, leave your comments and captions, sorry, should I say, in the comment section down below. It is time now for Hack forward slash bodge of the week. And we're going to start off with a couple of the same from last week. Uh, apparently there is method behind the madness of locking your sandals or flip flops up uh, because, because people in warmer climates than we experience here in the UK, uh, they leave work, walk to their bikes in their sandals, put their cycling shoes on and then lock their sandals up overnight, oh, yeah. ready for the next day. So not only did Maka Bing send us in that, but you also had one from Philip Mercer explaining it to us as well. So thank you very much for that. Next up, we have this from Bads the Human on Instagram, and it's a nice, cheeky little video, and he's basically put a little LED light on his hub, and the effect is yeah, rather illuminating. Yeah, I bet that looks fantastic. It's nice. a pretty cool, it's a simple yeah. but effective idea. Very good idea. Uh, meanwhile, Dave48 uh, has got another video for us, actually, where he has managed to get a bike attached to the rear of his scooter so he can transport it to a place that's slightly nicer for cycling, presumably. Uh, we've also got this one that's come in from Alan Gray and the same bar tape effect that we had on last Whoa. week's show. Uh, a few of us, or a few of you cooler kids, did explain to us exactly what it was called. I've forgotten. Uh, but ne nevertheless, we definitely still couldn't I do that admit, to our own bar tape. That's lovely. Isn't it? I mean, it's a bit oh, guily, isn't it? It you is. You can yeah. see Canada drag pack using that next year. It's uh, definitely a little bit of a work of art. Now, next up, we have this from Tom Francis over on Instagram. Oh my god, it worked! Hacked a tubeless tire inflator, gets me back on the crux, yep. which is a cross bike, of course. I don't know what to make of that. Well, it's the same pretty much as last week's one where he uh, didn't want to buy a whole new pump, so that will inflate his tubeless yeah. tires very quickly Pumping indeed. Up, yeah. uh, meanwhile, we have this one from Odd Anders, who's written in Dutch, I think it is, Stanley Classic Thermos Passer Perfect, uh, drink a flask holder in. I presume that means that this thermos flask fits perfectly in my bottle cage. And next up we have this from What De Heck of Beverly Hills. <laughs> what De Heck? What De Heck? Something along those kind of lines. I call this the minimalist. I don't have a saddlebag, so I made one, kind of. Well, that's basically a strap yep. holding his tie levers and yep. tyres. Yeah, the people saddle. used to do that years ago with a toe clip, didn't I, they? Uh, yeah, it kind, of, it kind of looked familiar, but that's what it is. But yeah, yeah pretty old school there. Uh, nothing really new here from Millie Watt. We've seen this before, but they have used their tri bars to mount mm. an iPad of sorts that they can follow along to GCN whilst they're cycling. Always a good hack nice from our point of view. Very good job, uh, I love this one from Juan Carlos Lemieux. Uh, seems like somebody's taken off the top tube because they want a bike which is more easily a step through and put their own kind of curved top tube on themselves. I hope they're good at brazing because yeah. that looks pretty dodgy to me. Next up we have this from Richard Beeston. Um, lost my Garmin magnet, need a replacement for a Global Cycle Network turbo session, so made one from a fridge magnet. That's quite cool. Fair play. Uh, have you got any hacks? Well, sorry, I was just stunned really actually at the size of the fridge magnet they used, but I guess it worked. Awesome uh, have simplistic. you got any hacks or bodges that you would like us to see and put on next week's show? As per usual, you can use the hashtag GCN hack on various forms of social media. Keep them coming. <laughs> Dom has chosen a single tweet for us this week in reply to Team Sky, who wrote, We'll be revealing a new sign of 2017 in one hour. I thought it might be you, Matt, you know, since you no longer no, we were, we were been in disbanded. Early, early talks, but it's gone a bit quiet, yeah. really. Uh, anyway, in reply, before the rider was revealed, Ian Boswell of Team Sky wrote, Another one? He's obviously getting bored with all the new signings. Maybe he's a bit. Uh, nervous about his job. Well, the boss was on the phone earlier on wanting me to help him out in the mountains, so... You know, was he? Yeah. Uh, it turns out that the new signing was John Dibbon, one of the UK specialist track riders who does a lot of road racing as well from Team Wiggins. Yeah, world champion on the track. Good signing. Time now for comment of the week. Now, these were under the top five cycling rivalries. First up is this from Luke Sullivan. Dan Lloyd versus Mineral Waters. That is pretty funny. But there was an even better answer from Briss Focus. Dan Lloyd Versus white, versus white cycling shorts. <laughs> yeah, great, thanks That's so much. That's pretty genius, that is. Right, I can get my own back here Go because get lots more likes on this next oh, one from Andy gosh. Jones, who said, Matt Stevens versus clip in pedals. And this leads us nicely on to his latest crash. Yeah, Matt's been off the bike again. Check this out.
on the channel this week. On Wednesday, it's how to recover faster. If you're someone with a very busy and hectic job, it's probably best not to do your training sessions before work. Instead, do them after work. That way, when you get home, you can relax before going to bed. Yeah, because bed, or more accurately, sleep, is even more important to your recovery than you might think. On Thursday, we have the top 10 things to carry with you on a bicycle ride. And on Friday, it's Ask GC Anything. Saturday's pro bike is John Dagenkolb's Giant in his last race with Team Giant Alpsin at the Abu Dhabi Tour. That'll be coming to you from Tom Last himself. And on Sunday, Cy Richardson visits Zip to find out exactly how they make their wheels. Monday, Cy's back again. Uh, this time he's giving you five ways to make sure that your cyclocross bike is roadworthy. And off-road worthy, as the case may be. Sorry, I'm a little bit excited about, about Tuesday. Why? It's the 202nd GCN oh show. Oh my goodness, we are actually going to have to get a new candle for that, aren't we? I know. We can't just turn things around. From 3,000 meters above Death Valley, California, welcome to the GCN show. We shall leave you, as ever, with Extreme Corner. And this one is a POV descent of the Red Bull Rampage from Kurt Sword. And it really is quite incredible. You probably want to hold your breath. Can I look up? Uh, I don't know, I can't see anything. Should we give it a gamble? It's finished. Oh. That was one of the scariest things I've ever seen. I couldn't take any more of it. That was ridiculous. Right, make sure you subscribe to the Global Cycling Network. If you haven't done so already, all you've got to do for that is to click on the globe. And remember, it's absolutely free. Now, I've got a couple of other videos we'd like you to watch. If you click just up here, you'll see Simon going fully retro V modern with a giant TCR, the first sloping top tube road bike. And in the bottom corner, Matt shows you seven magnificent ways to prop your bike up, which is much better than it sounds. I love that. Video. Prop or lean your bike. Okay. Yeah. Mm.